Hey, hello there. Let's talk about today's Lee Coding Challenge question. All passes are from source to target. Given a directed acyclic graph, DAG, uh, we want to find all possible passes from node 0 to node n-1 and return them in any order. So it's obviously a graph problem and we're dealing with DAG. Uh, so the input to us is uh, the adjacency list representing the outgoing edges. So if you look at the first entry 1 and 2, that means node 0 has an outgoing edge towards node 1 and it also have an outgoing edge towards node 2. Uh, so that's the input to us. And the acyclic part is a guarantee that uh, there is no cycle in the graph. So whenever uh, we, whatever traversal strategy that we pick, DFS or BFS, uh, if you follow that to explore the graph, there's no way we're going to end up in an infinite loop in there. So we don't have to worry about that, it's just, which is nice. Uh, a couple more things to talk about uh, based on the problem text is that uh, we want to find all the possible passes from a given node to a target node. So for that reason, we want to use DFS rather than BFS. Uh, because we're not lo looking for the shortest pass. If we're looking for the shortest pass, we want to use BFS so we can terminate early. Um, but if we really want to explore all the graph, uh, then DFS is going to give us a better space, uh, less space requirement. Because BFS, um, you know, all the temporary pass is going to be uh, stored in there and uh, you just end up using a lot of space. But for DFS, uh, all you have is the current pass. So current and past you're exploring, so it's much less space. And one last thing is that uh, it's not really counting the number of unique ways from 0 to n-1. If you just do counting, uh, all you need is just the, the node. Um, you don't have to keep track of the prior uh, pass to that given node. So uh, since that we really want to keep a history of uh, the traverse, we want to use uh, backtracking. Uh, so that's uh, the analysis on the problem. Let's talk about the uh, time complexity. Um, because in the worst case, the graph is uh, fully connected. Every node is connecting to every other node inside this graph. And then uh, we are looking from the starting 0 to n-1. Uh, to n minus So there are n-2 total nodes in between. And since it's a uh, fully connected graph, uh, the, we pretty much going to... Uh, all the possible paths here are going to lead to from 0 to n minus 1. So the total for that is just the enumerating over all the possibilities by turning on, including or excluding one of the node in, inside this pass. So the total is going to be 2 to the power of n minus 2 uh, unique different passes in the worst case. And um, it, for every pass, it takes an order of n time to generate that. So uh, that's just uh, approximately uh, 2 to the n multiplied by n. That's the time complexity. So that's the time complexity. And for, pa for space complexity, if we use DFS, um, it's going to be order of n. We only keep uh, the current path that we are exploring. So that's, uh, that's why uh, DFS or backtracking is given better space. For BFS, it's going to be uh, a lot worse. And uh, this, is, this space requirement is excluding the space required to hold the um, uh, return, return, return the passes. So if you keep track, if you also count that in, that will be two to the n multiplied by n. It will be the same value as the time complexity. Uh, so with that, um, I'm just going to dive into the code here. So we use a list to, to container to store all the possible passes. And uh, um, what else do we need? We need to find the number of nodes inside this graph because we are given the adjacency list in its full, uh, so it's just going to be the length of it. And uh, um, yeah, so we're just going to call the backtrack on the initial candidate uh, pass, which is the initial node zero. Um, so that's uh, pretty much the skeleton of the code. Uh, all the detail is going to be in this backtrack procedure. It's taking a candidate pass here. Uh, so the criteria that uh, we promote this candidate to the final solution is that uh, um, it ends up with the target node we want. So 
that's the last node here. Uh, if it's an n-1, then uh, we want to put this pass onto the uh, collection and then return. And note that we have to make a physical copy because otherwise uh, it will be if we just append a pointer to this list, it's going to be changed later on in the code. So that's why we create a physical copy. That's order of n time uh, to, to do this. Otherwise, we're going to expand the candidate uh, pass by uh, exploring all the possible nodes we can go from the last node here. So, uh, so that, that just means that uh, we have a, a number of different choices that we can do uh, at this given time. So that's uh, looking at uh, from the latest uh, node in the pass, in the temporary candidate pass, where can we go next? Uh, so for each of those choices, uh, we append that node to the temporary candidate pass. And call this uh, backtracking uh, on the expanded uh, candidate pass. And after that, we want to remove that. Uh, so this should be it. Uh, yeah. So the code is pretty pretty clean actually. Um, yeah. Just initialize the container to hold all the passes. Uh, and uh, uh, we start with a candidate pass that's just the starting node. Um, in each backtracking call, uh, we determine whether the candidate pass can be promoted to a legit pass from node 0 to n minus 1 by checking the real last node in the temporary pass. Uh, if it's n minus 1, the last node that we're looking for, uh, we add that to the container and uh, return from the backtrack. Otherwise, uh, we'll use that last node to guide us towards uh, all the possible next positions, expand the candidate pass by adding that new node, uh, call the backtracking again. Uh, after that, uh, we're going to uh, pop it off to restore the original pa candidate pass. So the space here, uh, if we exclude the space requirement for the pass here, uh, it's going to be only this candidate here. It's going to be order of n. Um, and the backtracking uh, call in the, the stack call will be also of uh, order of n. So it's, um, um, it, it's linear with respect to the number of nodes. Uh, so that's what I put it here. And the time is uh, this one, uh, 2 to the n multiplied by n. That's the worst case when everything is uh, interconnected with each other. So there are 2 to the power of uh, n minus 2 different passes from 0 to n minus 1. And uh, each of those would take n time to generate also uh, take n time to copy, copy over. Uh, the, the worst case is take an order of n time to copy it onto the pass. Uh, so that's the time and space analysis for the problem. Uh, yeah.